Hello everyone. So today we've got a whiteboard, so that must mean I'm going to be doing some teaching. So one thing that I've not really got into too much depth, and I think I'm guilty of not doing it, is the wire and build method. Now the wire and build method I've been basically put into three camps. So you've got your loose wire, crimping and soldering. And the reason why I've done that is because we all probably start out around here because we go out and buy all the relevant parts. So from a wire perspective, you get the BNC and RCA and a wire splitter connector and you have all your wires loose, but the kit is functional. And if you're a member of the uh, Night Vision Builders group, you'll see that you know, we're all very much clubbed together to get you up and running you know, with your first build. And by doing so, you're quite happy, you know, you, you've got a kit, go out, you, you shot your rabbits, your foxes, your rats, whatever you're going to be shooting, and you've been quite happy. The thing is, what, what happens is I can almost guarantee, probably on the first night you'll come back thinking, I don't quite like those cables hanging around, it was a bit cumbersome, I was having to tidy them up, I was having to, you know, use elastic bands or maybe some insulation tape and take it off, and, you know, the list goes on and on. But, so then you start coming into this area. So, and these are the two areas that are basically, you've got your soldering and crimping. The crimping is very loosely termed, but I'll explain that in a second. So, whilst you've been initially buying a lot of stuff, if we're going to do, go down the crimping and soldering, we can actually kill off the BNC and the Y splitter. Now, whilst it looks here that I put the costs essentially the same, the reason being is if you're going down the crimp or the solder, I'd probably recommend that you get some uh, shrink tubing. Uh, it's nice, nice stuff. To me personally, it's expensive for what what it is. But you know, if you if you buy it, it, it will prove, prove useful. You will use it more than you know just the one build. I mean, I put I build a fair few kits nowadays, and you know I can quite happily utilise the full roll and still make it um, profitable for me to use. But if you use it just the once, you know, it's probably a bit of an expense. But you can use insulation tape if you want to, but I am now more of a fan of the shrink tubing. Uh, but by all means, you can use insulation tape as a temporary measure. But that's the kind of method that I use. And one of the main reasons is I suffer quite badly from uh, shaking. And I can't get my soldering to be as accurate as I like it to be. Um, don't get me wrong, if I could be as um, like some of the professional uh, people out there who solder for a living, I'd quite happily solder a hell of a lot more than I do now. But I physically can't. Uh, the videos that you've seen me doing where I've done solder, I can assure you I've done that video about four or five times before you've even seen it on YouTube. So that's one of the negatives for me. So my method has come down into the, the crimp side. Albeit, even though that um, soldering is a good method, it then has an additional cost. And the thing is, you've got to then go out and you've got your shrink tubing, you've got your solder, and you've got your soldering iron. Now, there are, I was in Maplin today, and this is why I was pondering this, is I was in Maplin today and they had a, a cheap soldering iron, 30 watts soldering iron, which would probably do the job. It's seven ninety nine, but if you then think seven ninety nine would probably get you, it'd get you your flow plus tube. Um, you probably definitely get a, a silicon tube. Depend again, depend on the, the method of the build that you're going to go for. Um, you might even uh, squeeze out a, a scope mount for the screen. But as you can see, what I'm trying to point out is that if you go down the solder method, whilst it is very good and Again, you know, if you're wanting to go down that route, I would strongly recommend solder all these connections. And you, you say, well, you're still not going to have a problem here, but you, that makes it almost bulletproof. But you're increasing the cost of your build. So if you're then wanting to then think, okay, I, I want the cheapest build I can get, sometimes this doesn't even get considered. You're very much focused on the cost level element of all your parts. So that's just to give you a flavour of, you know, how and generally why. I go down this method as opposed to solder. What I will do though is I'm going to have a bash and again I might have to do this several times is I'm going to do a kit that is soldered and crimped and the reason I'm going to do it is in two folders. One to just show you the actual difference and I will put the video together um, albeit I think these are all going to be redone anyway but 
and then I'm going to test them with a multimeter and just see whether there's actual any difference that can be really detectable and noticeable on two different um, you know, two different methods. So I'll plug the solder one in, plug the crimp one in, we'll get the battery powered up, we'll have a one single target down there just to see whether there's actual any physical difference that you can tell between the two. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll be quite happy to be proven incorrect if you know, the, the crimping has any form of difference between that and the soldering. But personally, I think they're actually going to turn out pretty much the same. But I will put the video on and I will stand by my word if I get it wrong and quite happy to say that. So anyway, that's me just waffling on again. So until next time, I shall leave you be and we'll see you later. Okay, thanks. Bye.